Hey, YouTube Rando here. So we just got finished harvesting the remainder of our okra. Uh, there's still a little bit left on there. Probably another mill's worth that we'll go ahead and let grow up before we pull them. Uh, you can see we got a nice size bowl full. Uh, and I'm just sick of okra. You know, we've been eating it quite a bit. We've gotten a lot of mills out of those uh, few okra plants we did plant. Uh, we'll definitely be doing okra yearly now. But we're going to rehydrate this, or dehydrate this stuff, rather. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, now, dehydrated okra is not anything you're going to rehydrate and then fry or something like that. Uh, but it goes great in, like, soup, stews. Uh, honestly, it's great in uh, gumbo, and that's what we're going to use it for. We're going to dehydrate it now. And then wintertime comes around, we eat a lot of chili, chicken and dumplings, gumbo, stuff like that. So... Uh, it'll be ready this winter to use. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cap and the tip. And we're going to discard those all together. And these bigger pieces like that, as long as they're soft, they're good to use. Uh, I don't know whoever said that you can't use big okra, but you can. They are a little bit harder, but not much. <laughs> We're going to slice it up just like we did the jalapenos we uh, dehydrated. You can see it's a little bigger than a quarter inch. Most of it's fairly uniform. Try to keep the seeds in there as well as you can. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get these cut up, get them loaded up on the trays, and we'll show you where we're at. Alright, so it's just about 7 p.m. We've got them all cut up, loaded up. We ended up with three and a half trays out of this. Uh, we're doing this on the Ronco dehydrator. We have modified it, so it should be done tonight. Otherwise, this thing would probably not be done until tomorrow. Um, you can see they're different sizes. They're not all the same size. I tried to get them as uniform as possible, but, you know, as close as I could get. Uh, we're going to rotate this bottom tray here to the top in right around two to three hours we'll say three hours uh, and then we're just going to continue to rotate uh, we'll probably do it every two hours because I'm going to use the modification we did and really boost up the heat in there just a little bit and get the air moving in there quite a bit so uh, we'll come back and show you what we have here in a few hours alright so it's been seven eight about four, four and a half hours now. Uh, we've got the tray that we started with on top and the very bottom. I just wanted to share uh, with you guys how I've modified my Ronco. Um, I did a video on it. If you want to go look, I, it'll you know give you the specifics of how I did it. But pretty much I just run a small hair dryer on top of it about five or ten minutes every hour or so. Uh, I, I don't I won't go past 10 minutes, but usually I'll just sit there and run it for 5 minutes, turn it off, and walk away, and it sure saves me a lot of time. And then I'll drop the plate back in there, lock the heat into place, and there's what we have right now. They're almost done. They're not far from it. They're still a little bit soft. So we'll let that bottom tray come up to the top. Uh, we may run the hair dryer a little bit more often. By the way, I bought this hair dryer to modify this. So it's like $5 at the dollar store or something like that. I don't quite recall what I paid for it. But it's not a hair, it's never been used as a hair dryer. It's only been used for this and this alone. So um, we'll come back either right when they're done or right when we're fixing to wrap up and show you what we have. Alright, so we went 12 hours total time on this, uh, and you can see that great big white Tupperware bowl, which was probably three times this, the size of this bowl. Um, it was full of okra, and now you know, we got it all compact down to one small bowl. We went 12 hours with it. Uh, let me get a piece here, and you can see it just kind of crumbles. That's how you know when it's ready. That's how I tell when pretty much anything's ready. Uh, except certain things like onions and potatoes, they shouldn't just crumble. Uh, they're going to be more pliable, but 
we're going to call these done. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a glove, if you're going to be touching these when you're done dehydrating them, you need to go ahead and put on gloves so you don't get your oils um, all over the product. And then, you know, that's something that can make it go bad. To store these, we're just going to put them in a mason jar with an O2 sensor, or O2 sensor <laughs> with an <laughs> oxygen absorber. Uh, and like I said, go get in gumbo, stuff like that. Uh, dehydrated okra is great for that. So we're just trying to find a way to store up our extra okra for the winter time. That's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, YouTube.